So the second talk is by Sergei Gal on binomial difference ideals and uh, the difference values. Thanks. Uh, as you said, I will talk about the binomial uh, difference ideals and, uh, and the toric difference varieties. Uh, so the, the background. So the toric variety was uh, somehow started. Uh, independently by several groups of uh, researchers in the 19, early 1970s. And the binomial idea was uh, in the paper uh, of Eisenbach and Sturmfield in, in 1996. So these uh, theories has deep connections with uh, polytops, metatorics, simplex uh, geometry, and topology. Also has a lot of applications in physics, algebraic statistics, including theory, uh, some talk in this uh, conference, including theory, and uh, hypergeometric functions. Uh, they also, because they are simple, and they also use as non-trivial examples to illustrate the sometimes a very abstract theory of algebraic geometry. Uh, so in this talk, uh, we try to develop a similar, similar uh, theory of binomial ideas and uh, toric varieties in the differential uh, difference I mean, algebraic geometry, and I hope that they can also, in the future, play a similar role as those in the algebraic case. So I will briefly introduce uh, say like this, and then mostly we're uh, talking about tomorrow, binomial difference ideal, and toric difference ideal, and toric difference variety. And then finally, a brief, uh, brief introduction to the algorithm. So say like this. So we know that like this, here, uh, lattice is a Z module in Z and PowerPoint. It's a player key role in the study of algebraic uh, lattice, algebraic toric varieties. But in the difference case, here we need Z lattice. Here, Z lattice <coughs> is just a Z module uh, with the entries as vectors uh, of, uh, of uh, universal polynomials with integer coefficients, as ZX and PowerPoint. So for, for a, a ZX like this, we have two kinds of representations. We can give, we can give it, uh, we can give the generators F1 to Fs. Uh, but uh, more conveniently, sometimes we also uh, write these vectors as columns of the matrix, that's F, capital F, which has F1 and Fs as uh, columns. So this is a N times S matrix with interest and in ZX. So uh, ZX is not a PID uh, compared to Z. So some of the nice properties used in the algebraic case did not, uh, we did not have it here. For example, uh, a, a ZX like this is not necessarily free. Uh, also, we do not have an Hermit normal form. These are the two very basic facts used a lot in the study of the algebraic case. So instead of that, instead of this, uh, we have uh, some generalized properties. So for the Erby normal form, we have this generalized Erby normal form. I will not give the formal definition of a little bit complicated. Yeah. Give an example. So compared to the Erby normal form, so instead of one column, we have two columns have the same number of elements, but uh, they have different degrees in X, and here also. So this is how we call generalized or normal form. And we can prove that a set of vectors f1 to fs uh, is a reduced Gerber basis of a ZX module. If and only if this matrix representation here exists uh, in the generalized or normal form. So basically, a generalized or normal form is a matrix form for reduce the carbon basis of the ZX lattice. So the second factor we use is that, so let's have be a, be a matrix uh, with ZX uh, 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 with polynomials as entries. So the kernel, of course, uh, is, uh, is a ZX module. It's a free model. That's, uh, that's the key. So we use these two facts. And then, uh, more binomial ideas. So in this talk, to make it simplified, uh, simple, a difference, a, dif a difference field F is defined as uh, as a field, ordinary field with a given automorphism from F to, uh, 
from S to F, of course, is F itself. So it's a simplified version. F is also assumed to be algebraically closed. For example, the algebraic closure of the rational functions uh, with the shift operator as the difference operator is in is a, uh, is a difference field satisfies these conditions. And uh, we also use a notation uh, which, uh, uh, which is also uh, kind of strange but is very convenient. For a polynomial, integer, co uh, integer polynomial, coefficient polynomial P, uh, we denote a to the power of p as a product of this form. Here the power of x i is used as the degree of the transformation of the degree of the difference operator. And the coefficient c i is used as, a, as the power. And note that c could be negative. Here is the example. a to the power of 3 times x squared minus 1. Uh, it's basically uh, this one is uh, sigma to the power of 2 a. <coughs> The power of three and then over x, the minus mine is over a, uh, over a. minus uh, is uh, used as a, as a euro series. So with this notation, uh, monomials, sigma monomials, can be uh, neatly written as y, of course, is the indeterminates, y to the power of f. Here f is a vector uh, with the entries in n x. But uh, in way, is the product of y to f y. So uh, these are the sigma or difference monomials. We, we, we call f the support of this uh, of this monomial, and f y as euro is the difference polynomial. And uh, for the Lorentz case, uh, natu uh, naturally uh, we replace n to z, and then we have the Lorentz uh, sigma monomials with support f, and uh, we use that notation uh, to denote the Lorentz sigma polynomial ring. And the uh, binomials, uh, naturally, is a polynomial of two terms. That's a y to the power of t plus b y to the power of h. Uh, g and h are the, are the exponentials are in, in this zxn, a, b are the coefficients. And uh, because it's a moron, it, it can be easily uh, rewritten as this normal form. Uh, we can uh, put all the, all the y's, all the, uh, the factors with y. In the first term, y to the power of f, and all the coefficients to, 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 to the other term is yf minus cf. This is a very uh, easy, okay, very easy to see that because it's a moron. And uh, a Laurent binomial sigma ideal is basically a difference ideal in the Laurent array generated by binomials of this form. Here, capital I is the index could be infinite. And later we will show that it's uh, actually finite. So, uh, so a, the first property for Laurent, I will use this Laurent binomial sigma ideal, is this. So if I is a proper uh, Laurent binomial ideal, then consider all the binomials in the ideal. Uh, take the exponential f, which is a factor in zx, uh, which is the element in zx. So all these elements, put them together, is a zx lattice. So the exponent uh, is a zx lattice. Uh, you can, this can be easily proved. Uh, the question is, actually, is some, somehow binomial ideals difference, I mean, uh, somehow in a one-to-one -one correspondence with uh, this kind of zx lattices. So the problem is how to construct a Laurent binomial sigma ideal from a zx lattice. So this, we give the first canonic representation for Laurent binomial sigma ideals. Uh, that's, uh, the solution is the so-called partial character. Uh, of course, it's an extension of the algebraic case. Uh, the, the partial character uh, rho over a zx lattice arrow rho is uh, simply a zx homomorphic, uh, homomorphism from arrow rho to the multiplicative group f star. So, of course, it can satisfy all the necessary conditions. So, with a partial character, we can construct uh, a Laurent binomial sigma ideal. So, basically, we take all the elements in the in the in the zx lattice our rho. So, we construct a binomial y to the power of f minus rho 
because of that rho, uh, because of the definition, rho f uh, is in f star. So this is the binomial. And, uh, they generate a partial, uh, they generate a lot of binomial sigma here. So the uh, theorem says that first, this idea is proper. Is, there, is no, there is no problem in it. And secondly, this gives all the Laura binomial sigma ideals. So either proper Laura binomial sigma ideal, even only if there exists a row partial character such that i equal to i row. So in, for this reason, i row uh, is called a small lattice of uh, i row, and it's called a small lattice of i row. And the more, uh, furthermore, a zx lattice is a zx module, of course, it's no three, so it's finitely generated. So l row always has a finite set, f1 to fs. So uh, in that case, this ideal is generated by these corresponding binomials. So as a consequence, any Laurent binomial sigma ideals is finitely generated. So as a consequence of this, we can write down as uh, its, uh, its generators. So this is the first canonic representation for the ideals with partial characters. For the second one, we need the concept of a difference ascending chain or auto-reduced set. It's already spoken by Professor Alana here. So difference ascending chain is some binomial set like this. So we can divide it into groups. In the first in the first row, all these polynomials are about U is a parameter, you can consider parameter set, and all of them, all of them are y1. The second polynomial is the second group, I mean, about uh, a polynomial of y1 and y2, and so on. So here is a simple example, polynomial y1 to the square of uh, y1 square, and second one is y1 x, x is prime, is sigma one, minus y1. So notice that the order is different, and, and so on. So we can rewrite it as a Laurent case. We divide y1 to this part, and it becomes minus 1. It's a Laurent uh, sigma auto-reducer set, you can call it. Because it's, normal, because it's a binomial, we can get, it, get the support of this, uh, this, uh, this chain. Here is a 2, 0. Uh, two. Uh, 0 means there's no y, no y2. And here is x minus 1. No y two zero and so on is a other binomial. So for binomial case, we can always use the support to represent the Laurent uh, chain. So the second uh, canonical representation. So here A is a set of uh, Laurent binomials and uh, F is in support. So it's uh, very clear now. So the result is that F is a reduced Gerber basis and uh, the, uh, the ideal generated by, by A in there is proper. If and only if A is a regular and a coherent difference ascending chain, or auto reduced ascent, or whatever you call it. And then, by uh, all the result, this is equivalent to that A is a characteristic set of the ideal generated by A. So, uh, as a consequence of this uh, result, we uh, give another representation. Uh, representation. So for any Laura binomial ideal I, it can be written as this form. Uh, I is generated by A, A is a regular and a coherent chain, and A is a characteristic set with itself. Uh, so as a consequence, uh, it can be shown that any Laura binomial sigma ideal is radical. Because because the chain here is very nice. It's centered, not only regular, it's centered. It's uh, any Laura binomial is a radical ideal. So uh, for sigma ideals, there are many other properties, like reflexive. Uh, ideal i is called reflexive. If p to the power of i belongs to i, p to the power of x belongs to i, implies p to i. And remember, x here is sigma, basically sigma p. And it's called perfect if uh, p to the power of a is any polynomial, is uh, n as uh, coefficients. Belongs to I implies p implies uh, implies p belongs to I, and this is equivalent with similar uh, condition. And it's called uh, prime is uh, in the same as the algebraic case. 
So we will give criteria, very simple criteria for this kind of uh, ideals. So first, the criteria for prime and reflex <coughs> uh, Laurent binomial sigma ideals. So uh, we will give criteria, criteria in terms of CX lattice. So uh, a, Z, a ZX lattice L is called C separated. If for integer A and F is a vector, uh, if A times F belongs to L, implies F belongs to L. It's called X separated. If for any F, X times F belongs to L, implies F belongs to L. It's called a separated. If it's both X and X, both A and X separated. So the result is for any lower binomial ideal. We already, we already know is written as an I row where row is a prime character. So the ideal I row is a prime if and only if it's supported like this, L row is this separated, C separated. And I row is reflective if and only if L row is X separated. And of course, combine this together, I row is reflective and prime if and only if L row is separated. So give this very neat criteria for ideals to be uh, so to be to, to, to be prime and reflective. Remember that polynomial ideals are always some computationally difficult, but the ZX modules are somehow very easy. That's, that's, the, that's the purpose. But for perfect ideal, it's somehow it's more complicated. First of all, I will give this simple example to show that generators of perfect ideals depends on the structure of f. For example, f equal to q uh, square minus three the p equal to y to the power of 3 minus 1. So the perfect ideal generated by p could be p plus y uh, to the power of x minus 1, or p uh, y to the power of x minus 2. Instead, of, uh, it depends on how you define the, the sigma, the, the, the difference operator. If it's equal to itself, then it's this case. If it equals minus, uh, square of uh, minus uh, three, then it's the second case. So this means we need something. We need something in order to have the perfect uh, ideal. So we need this uh, concept uh, transforming degree. So let's uh, zeta m is the uh, prime u m root of uni. Then, because remember that we assume the, the field are algebraically, algebraically closed. Then that means uh, the sigma Theta m is defined. We can prove that it must be a power of, of uh, theta m itself. And the power om and the index is the integer satisfying these conditions. And uh, for om, we can prove that y to the power of m minus 1, the perfect closure is just itself <coughs> plus y to the power of x minus om minus 1. So this is a, uh, the om is exists because they assumed I is algebraically closed. But if it's not, then you can define it either this way or this way. That's here, uh, for example, here in the first case, OM is 1. In the second case, OM is 2. That's the end. OM, yeah. So with this uh, notation, uh, we can define uh, the concept of, uh, of P-saturated, that's the perfect saturated. So ZX lattice, you call the perfect saturated if you satisfy this condition, so m is the integer, m times f belongs to l, implies that x minus om times f belongs to l. So this is the, 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 the concept. So with this, uh, we can prove that if i rho is perfect, then its support lattice must be per, must be perfect saturated. The other side, if, if the support lattice is perfect uh, saturated, then there are two possibilities. Either the perfect closure is a, a trivial ideal, or ideal is perfect. But this is a very special to the, to, the, to the difference algebra. It can only happen in difference algebra. In differential and arbitrary case, it does not happen. Here is this very simple example. <coughs> y1 and y2, there are two uh, variables. So this ideal is very nice, is, uh, is proper. It's support lattice in the P-separated, uh, but it's, uh, uh, the perfect closure is uh, the trivial one because these two polynomials uh, connect to each other. This means uh, sigma y1 is equal to y1, and here means sigma y2 equal to minus y2. And the, 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 the minus <coughs> and the 
class will be complex. Right? We will do factorization. And uh, I talked a lot about but the, but the Laura. Uh, I think I don't have time, but that's this part. So toric, so, so to make it simple, uh, toric, uh, toric variety basically is a concurrent of a of a map of a of a monomial map right, t to the power of f1, uh, alpha 1 to t to the power of r. That, that's the definition of alpha. So toric variety basically is the concurrent uh, of uh, of a uh, of the image of the par of a monomial parametrization. So in, the, in below is the example. So uh, the idea of toric variety can be characterized by what uh, we call the ZX like toric, ZX like this. Uh, like is called a toric if P times F belongs to L uh, implies F belongs to L. So P is a polynomial, universal polynomial uh, with integer coefficients. So with that, we can define toric sigma ideals, which is basically of this form. Note that there's all the coefficients are one. And F plus and F minus are the, are the part, uh, uh, set in the positive and the negative part of F. So the result is that a variety V is toric even only if it's a, it's a defining ideal is a toric, uh, is a toric sigma ideal. So basically, toric variety are in a one-to-one -one correspondence with toric ideal and in a one-to-one -one correspondence with toric ZX lattice. And uh, here we can do, because it's, it's a in the parametric uh, variety, we can do implicitization. We can also do parametrization. And here it's very simple because everything down was in the ZX lattice level. And uh, I will not uh, have time. But this is abstract definition of toric, uh, toric variety. So we define uh, sigma torus. Sigma torus basically is the image. Yeah. We use T alpha to, 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 to denote the image of the map I defined, right? a monomial map. And here there is some, there is some differences. And the sigma torus is somehow different, quite different from the algebraic torus. Uh, it's defined as, uh, as, as something uh, strange. It's called sigma called star closure of, 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 of those, uh, of those uh, quasi. Uh, anyway, so. I, of this result, so a variety x is toric if and only if x contain a sigma torus t star as an open subset and with a group action of the t star itself uh, extending to, to t star on x. This is uh, abstract, but it is also true in a different case. Uh, and uh, this uh, slides uh, hence uh, I lost it because the toric we started with, uh, we begin to study toric because it uh, connect a true form, the sparse results, and that's what I'm doing recently. So the result is that given a set of alpha, uh, basically is a support of a monomial, is a support uh, exponent of a monomial. We can show that the sigma true form for the toric variety x alpha is the sigma sparse result with suppose alpha. So, so basically, uh, the toric variety predicts a uh, true form and the sparse result. So as a consequence of all this, we can give an order bound for the toric variety. There is an order bound. This is basically the Yadavi number, uh, but uh, somehow somehow different. Uh, so let me go to the algorithm. So the algorithm part is also very simple because I already, sh I already, I already showed that properties of the, of, the, of the ideals can somehow always be transformed to the to the ZS lattice, to ZS modules. So that's what we done. Is algorithm. For example, the first algorithm, uh, we call it x factor. So the input is, a, is a, some elements from zx and, and the output is that if the zx lattice is generated, is not x generated. So we will output an h is not belong to L, but x times an h belong to L. Also the linear combination of those x. And then that means we find something, something out, something we factor in the x. And uh, with this, we can have many applications. That's all we need. We can design weather, the arrow is reflective, and so on. And all the other algorithms are quite similar. Here we find a z vector, and here we find a px vector, and uh, here we find a zx vector. That's all. 
here we found the perfect time trap. We'll pass them together. We can, can do it. So properties of Laura polynomial ideals are proved, and the concept of toric uh, sigma ideal is introduced, and its properties are proved. We also give algorithm for CX lattice and the Laura polynomial sigma ideals. So here, here the paper is just out. It's uh, there. It's uh, interesting. It's already in the public. Thank you. So you generalized basically affine toroid varieties. Is, are there projective toroid varieties or even more gen general uh, toroid varieties? Not yet, not yet. But uh, I think a similar theory exists. So uh, is it really generalization? So is there a value of sigma that gives you the, the classical toric variety? No, it's, uh, I think it's uh, quite different there is in many in many aspects and in many aspects. As I said, even for torus, even the definition for torus is quite uh, is quite different from 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 the algebraic case. Uh, as I said at the beginning, CX is a P is not a PID model. So a lot of the work, a lot of the methods used previously does not work here. Uh, for example, for the for the for the for the for the torus, even the de definition of torus have many twists to, to get the right definition. So in the algebraic case here at least uh, the the image uh -huh. of this map uh, is defined as a torus uh, because it satisfies this this condition. But this is not true anymore in, in the in the difference case. So uh, so we have to redefine the the the, 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 the torus. Also the torus the algebraic torus is isomorphism to, 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 to A to the to the always to the to the length space A to the power of A star uh, M. But in different cases it's not. So of course every generalization has some similar properties as it's done before. As the differential algebra is generalization of algebra but it has some generalization and some generalization. Here is also the case. So actually, I'm quite interested in this uh, generalized Hermite form that you have. Uh, 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 so does it match up with uh, the ordinary Hermite form when you have the univariate case? Here actually is a univariate case. If the coefficients becomes Q, become rational numbers, then it is. OK. But, the, but here, the coefficient is Z. That makes a difference. Let me go quickly. Because here the, the coefficient is z, that means two and x minus one. You cannot reduce. You cannot reduce x minus one by two. Okay. But if it's rational, then this becomes one. Yeah. And then that's the difference. So so so, so you also have a, a unimodular sort of like a, like somewhere online. Typically, with Hermit forms, you take your matrix and you do column operations. No, we, and don't, then you, we don't have so that. You don't have the sort of equivalent of uh, uh, the matrix. We don't have that. We hope we have, but we don't. Here, as, as here we said, it's almost it, it is equivalent to a reduced girl basis. It's much more, it's much more bigger, and much more complicated. And, and so, do you have reversibility? I mean, unimarking matrices are nice in the sense that they're like comma operations, which you can reverse. Yeah, we so tried to have that, but we did not. So we failed. We don't. We don't. We tried. To, we, at the beginning, we tried to work out something similar. Mm -hmm. But here, actually, we're still working on this. <laughs> here, are only the basic part. Yeah. Did you try this approach with lattices to the ring of regular uh, difference uh, polynomials? Not, not Loran polynomials, but regular difference polynomials. No, I, I have one slice on that. I, I would say this. Uh, most of the pro properties I proved here, uh, I, I said here, are somehow are, can be generated to the binomial case, but some are still not. Some are still open. For example, the perfect the perf the criteria for perfect uh, for perfect uh, yeah. ideals is not is not true yeah. in the uh, in the regular yeah it's not true in the in that case but we still work on also we still working on that yeah. well, thank you very much.